So, uh, diving into this uh, formation phase, uh, it's basically this um, this part where uh, we could we could think that of course there can be minus three, minus four, minus five. That's more of a of a basic entrepreneurship education or or entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset building through more traditional education. But the the minus two point really is that there is now at least some kind of motivation and drive or interest starting to emerge uh, wanting to to look at this journey more seriously so it's basically the earliest part where we could look at uh, look at the, to kind of start capturing this kind of more serious uh, thoughtful approach also we start from minus two and not from zero is exactly that we want to separate the um, the pre-activities from the actual journey that starts and to this way to be able to communicate um, this, this portion. Because uh, in reality, majority of uh, startup talk and guidance start more from the zero point and we felt that there was much more that is needed in this formation uh, portion because there needs to be a higher volume of, of, of uh, activities identified, captured, or inspired to, to work on, on this part. To have enough potential uh, companies and venture to actually then go through this journey. So in many places it's kind of expected that there is a team, it's expected that there is already a good idea, but not so much is put uh, on on how do those actually come come together and that's why this module and that's why this this approach for the whole framework so the formation phase is, is really a vital phase to pass over to start making a uh, real process it's it's really most crucial phase uh, for an opportunity for core team building so really the founders team building it's, it's, it gets harder the longer the venture goes to, to find um, core team members, um, specifically when we think of uh, ownership and equity positions with meaningful uh, ownership levels or meaningful um, responsive, carrying meaningful responsibility because those go hand in hand. So the earlier the team can be be built and aligned and identified, uh, the more, the stronger it, it can be, the, the more united it can be uh, for, the, for the whole journey overall. So, uh, as mentioned, a lot of support functions expect ideas already to exist instead of uh, providing systematic approach to really find valuable problems to develop ideas from. So helping to find market problems. It's not too hard to find the, the bigger companies, existing companies in the marketplace. They, they have uh, visibility to markets that they can even feed. The research uh, findings can feed a lot of problems it's not too hard to find problems worth solving, but at the same time, the other part is this whole ideation process of how to come up with ideas in a more systematic way. That uh, these techniques and knowledge is available, and that's why we want to, to highlight what's, what's available, uh, not by us, but by others, and also our perspectives into those, um, so that uh, those can be more effectively applied into a venture. So, <clears throat> to summarize the development phases framework, it, it gives guided focus, it gives a progress measure, it gives um, generic milestones in addition to milestones that you may, may and want to build yourself. Uh, it limits your amount of, of balls in the air that you need to be handled at any given time. Uh, and it really brings attention 
to, to many things that are hard and therefore oftentimes uh, actually uh, the, the human natural uh, thinking is that well we'll figure out those hard things later or we'll figure out those when we have to but uh, a lot of these types of things that are hard stuff and only push to the future are done so because of the the uh, emotional reasons not for uh, uh, target or success based reasons so it's it's really these kind of uh, certain things are uh, fundamental foundational things that really should be looked at in the very beginning to to have a thoughtful process to have a clear thinking process behind them and really resolve and make sure certain foundational things are put in place correctly uh, and not just push those in the future because those are ex exactly like time bombs that you just put on your own back and think that you can figure out them later. They will only get harder so it's, it's not that when you get further along that somehow these hard things get easier. Uh, so it's actually the counterproductive way is that the more hard stuff you know you have that you have to figure out anyway, the earlier you figure them out, the less pain you will have in the future, the more, the, the, the more you can focus on the growth, the more you can focus on the business because you don't have to try revisiting these things. And also there are fundamental things that it's actually almost impossible to, to, to readjust or fix certain things like ownership levels, uh, like IPR issues and some other things later in the, in the, in the, in the development phase, as well as potentially find uh, good co-founders later. So another part is that if not identifying the types of thinking and the types of basic actions or activities that you should have uh, from the very beginning is basically also creating this uh, uh, challenges to actually scale. So basically it, it's like growth without ability to grow is failure. And, 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 and this is specifically the kind of the hidden thing inside that even if you get the uh, innovation right and even if you get the, the product to pull you so that there's a high demand of the service and product, you still have to build the whole organization. And if you have no uh, prior activities in that area, or if you now know, not have any expertise in that area, usually it may lead to decisions where, uh, for example, a typical failure is that because then this knowledge is not embedded this uh, practice of learning these things that are necessary for growing an organization leads typically a hiring a person uh, from uh, a, a corporate background that has experience in running a bigger organization, but there's a big cultural conflict that usually happens between startup uh, and agile mentality with the organizational aspect and without the experience, it's really hard to read into what is relevant, what is risk, and what things to what things to um, should be considered and how. Because on one hand, there's no experience, and on the other hand, there's experience, but not startup experience either. And the pre people who have experience in actually growing a startup organization are very few and oftentimes committed already to other ventures in an operative team. So that's a, a very typical uh, uh, risk item that comes by just uh, trying to overlook these things at the early phase. So uh, there's the story about the rabbit and the turtle. Uh, about uh, it's not necessarily about the speed at any given uh, point of time, but it's the overall progress and the the, the target to the success that matters not necessarily all the pace at every, every single uh, phase. Because it's not that there would be any different amount of things to figure out, it's more and merely in what order 
to figure those out and what type of activities to, to start and to make sure that uh, these things are done in, with the balanced focus uh, from, from the beginning. So, two main segments, building service product into a business from an idea and then on the other side from building a team, uh, balanced skill, commitment or base of, base, base of organization, values, cultures, agreements, business processes and, uh, and also having a roadmap on this side that is, is looking into how these things need to be set on any specific phase. In, in the support functions, it's good to kind of see where, where to seek support from in your own, own ecosystem. So in the beginning part, it's important to accumulate and, and, and consume as much of the knowledge as possible and, and, and build your own, own library of, of knowledge that you feel is, is best for you. And, uh, and, and also seek support from public services or publicly funded services that oftentimes are free or almost free uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for, your, for your needs. And then you can also match where you are at your own development phases to kind of when the more private side and channels and investors, money and connections start to become relevant. And then depending on the support ecosystem, startup ecosystem that uh, you are tapped into, um, then, then these may vary depending on how actively private side is, is reaching out, how earlier phases they are reaching out and what type of services as well on the other side, how far the public services are expanding their reach um, and on the, on the more different later phases. So <clears throat> the, the journey really being, begins from an entrepreneurial person or, or persons uh, wanting to build a joint startup venture with or without an idea or a problem they want to solve. So it doesn't need to start with an idea, it can start from the commitment of we want to build a venture and we will find together a meaningful problem to come up with a potential innovation and idea to solve. Of course, it can also start from, from the, the kind of having arrived into an idea <coughs> or a problem wanting to solve and then starting to, to find people around that. The main point here is that there is no kind of one way, but it somehow these ingredients need, need to start coming together, either randomly or through uh, activities that um, some of the organizations are trying to put in place, like Startup Weekend, hackathons, uh, university projects, and so forth, where these kind of ingredients are mixed and seeing if there is something coming out of that. Uh, but even more so from purely from people working, for example, in an organization, knowing the industry and starting to see change happening and seeing that own organization is, is not following the, the future direction and there is a real opportunity in the markets. So many different ways to start. Uh, what should be after this stage? So basically, clear, trying to define a perspective into on the what's in the beginning and where this stage kind of ends or what should be achieved in this, this state. So really to have a committed core co-founder core co team with the right attitude, skills, uh, initial resources required. So mainly in minimum, this means the core founding team with skills uh, with enough time to be able to continue to push the venture forward. It doesn't necessarily need, need to be money in these days anymore. Uh, it's basically giving up your free time and focusing on that free time to push the venture forward. Um, but then to include aligned vision, mission strategy, 
uh, and having a, a rightfully balanced or calculated ownership. So this, this should be in place and, and this should be the focus in the formation phase in the, in the team side. There should be clear and agreed IPRs, so intellectual property rights. Um, we'll go into this more detail. Uh, assign shareholder agreement. Basically, this is a validation for the two above, above points. So basically, if there is no founder shareholder agreement confirming the team structure, the responsibilities, the intellectual properties, the ownership levels, then basically the validation that there is a team is missing. There should be a clear idea or, or set of ideas uh, aiming for specific uh, problem or specific market opportunity with enough potential. So there should already be clearly the, the, the at least the market and the problem identified and perhaps even several different ideas for that or there could be potentially even more problems or uh, potential markets uh, or market segments within the market that are looked at at this point. Um, but the direction should be, be very clear. Uh, there should be an awareness of market timing. So not necessarily that may be right or wrong, but there should be awareness to what is our market timing. Um, and, and how is our positioning towards the market because that, uh, that then uh, changes the types of strategies that should be applied for market entry. And some ideas also behind how this business model uh, and this product or service can be delivered in a scalable manner. It doesn't have to be scalable yet, but there should be a consideration and, and ideas on how to how to make this scalable. So this is basically the qualification criteria for the for the validation phase. So for the for the next phase. <clears throat> so basically, with this this uh, framework and this uh, logic, it gives freedom to really focus on on solving those. Um, those criteria or so those uh, phases first before needing to worry too much of the next phases. The future doesn't disappear anywhere, uh, the markets doesn't disappear anywhere, uh, or if that's the case that the market is, uh, is, is, is potentially disappeared, then you have to reevaluate whether your resources are going to be enough anyway. And again, money doesn't fix this because you still need the people. Uh, you get very different types of commitment out of people if you just pay them salaries versus having true co-founders. And that impacts your ability to scale. Um, and, and all of this comes with also a mix of what is the experience of, of uh, the, the leading co-founders uh, to, to navigate through these setups. Uh, another more painful way to do it is just to ignore all the guidance and in, in information and the, the, I would say the, the, the proven practices that should be taken into account and just trying to do it and wing it. And uh, in, in, in very random cases, in the level of lottery ticket, you may be actually successful but that's very unlikely and it's not a good strategy for building success by design. Um, but you will all definitely learn from that journey as well. And that, of course, naturally happens a lot, but that's also why the failure rates of building adventures are so high. I'll stop here for a couple of questions, if there is any, just to make sure that um, that if there's or any other points to highlight before continuing uh, further. Until now, no. Um, yeah, so we can go on. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, 
the formation phase is all about how to gear up for the journey and then what type of uh, things to, to think about. And, and, and basically, this is a combination of figuring out the ambition level, figuring out the market opportunity, the market size, and not only just thinking about uh, about uh, how you should uh, resolve things uh, uh, in in the next few days or next few weeks or next few months. So while you have to focus on working and executing on things that are the formation based, you still need to build the tools and and also the path and direction for the overall journey as well. So because those are tools that you are also going to need to establishing the founder founding team. So the way to think about this is like uh, it's very different to climb your local you know hill that you can just you know walk there and start walking up and with enough time you are on the top than really conquering something like Mount Everest. It's the Pretty much the same same thing. You could just go on the bottom of the Mount Everest and start climbing that, but at some point you would have to come back because you were actually not prepared for what was ahead head on that journey. So basically, this thinking on the formation phase is not only figuring out all the things that you need to be able to do to get to the base camp, but also what types of gear, what types of tools, what types of things you need to have with you uh, for the journey along the way. So basically this is really preparing for this journey. And with this it's also finding the, the learning and understanding between the short-term activities, short-term plans uh, versus the long-term thinking and, uh, and long-term planning. So you need to have both thinking in, included in, in the activities and even in the communication when talking with team members or talking with others, you should go always kind of know, well, this is about the, our long term, this is about our vision or this is about, and this is now on our daily stuff, this is next month thing, these are the things that we need to be doing ongoing basis, these are the things we need to achieve next year and so forth. Because with this type of language in the communication, it easily gets mixed uh, mixed messages or mixed communication of, of what are we talking about now? Are we talking about how we are in the future? Or are we talking something we are today? And, uh, and that's, that's important. About the kind of very basics of, of gearing up and understanding this type of uh, thinking. So basically, this is the, the visualization of, of having a vision of just moving forward and just we're going to climb that hill versus we're going to climb that mountain. And, and, and this is a very, very different thing. So you and your team are the ones who set your ambition level. So it may be Mount Everest, it may be you know, your local hill, which would be more like a small business or a SME, um, or it can be something in between, or it can be even further than a mountain. You can go for the moon, you can go for the Mars, it's up to you. But uh, you should understand this, this, this logic and have a way of communicating this. So the, the, the analogy of how to think about the planning is, is really about, you can see the top of the Mount Everest, you can see where you are in context of that. You can see, uh, depending on the weather, you can see quite clearly uh, certain steps along the way. But in between, and even on the on the very top, it's really hard to know in detail what is actually going on at you know certain level of the of the mountain. How the weather is going to change. What types of paths there are. There's many paths you can follow to the to the top and, and so forth. 
So there's a certain amount of unknowns, and then there's a, a certain amount of of uh, uh, understanding about these things, and there's certain clarity to those things that you can see much closer. Um, but but you have to kind of learn to understand uh, and communicate in the ways of, of this journey. And this is very much a similar how the startup journey can be uh, considered from the founders and founding team members' perspective.